So the first card out of this uh, spread here is represents your first house. And the first house is considered the rising sign or you, the ascendant. This is pretty much the face that you present to the world and the way that other people perceive you as well as the energy that you are bringing as we uh, get into January of 2017. So the first thing here is the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups is somebody who is very, very happy with where they are in life. I mean, they're radiating and they have a lot of love and affection to give other people. Your demeanor for this month is very soft, is very ethereal, and it's also very, very spiritual as well. Um, with this card, it basically means, you know, like uh, having a new love in your life, finding a purpose in life as well, and being feeling very emotionally stable, emotionally sound. It's also the uh, the ace, so it represents, you know, new beginnings when it comes to your emotional life, okay? So I feel that you're coming into this month in a very optimistic, happy, and just um, feeling very loved and very cared for and very nurtured by other people. So this is a very great card to have starting out this year. So this is, um, you know, set intentions for the rest of you, the year. This looks very positive. The second house deals with your money, your finances, as well as your value system. So the second house, we have the Six of Cups in the reverse position. So let's talk about your money situation, your finances, and income. Uh, the Six of Cups in the reverse position, for those of you who have children, first of all, there are a lot of uh, expenditures being, you know, spent on children. And um, it's neither good or bad. It's basically neutral. And I feel that, you know, they're, they're grown up very, very quickly. And there's a lot of likes, um, I, I, I feel like, you know, just a lot of costs associated with child rearing. And what I'm also feeling as well is um, a lot of you, if you're in a situation where you have been divorced, there is um, either, you know, child support, a lot of money coming out towards children and um, a lot of expenditures around the household as it relates to children. Um, I do see pets as well for many of you, okay? So a lot of your time resources, especially your financial resources, are devoted toward t towards taking care of children and uh, finances. For those of you who do not have children, the Six of Cups in the reverse basically indicates, to you, uh, indicates a situation where some things have to change when it comes to your financial environment. How you make money, uh, and where you're working, for example. So this is an emotional tie, and it's a tie that is, you know, purely emotional, and it's no longer practical. So what that means is, as it relates to your work environment as well, there might be a situation where you have stayed past the expiration date for that job, where you have pretty much learned all the skills that you need to learn, and so you're not really progressing anymore. It's also a job where it feels almost as if there aren't opportunities to either rise up, um, you know, climb that career ladder, or even like any type of vertical lateral movement. You can't really transfer out. You can't really get a pay increase and things like that. So I feel like you are capping out your income generating potential or your earning potential. So it's urging you to really re-examine how you're making money and whether or not um, you're, you're still content, okay? Because I feel like a lot of people are staying in a work situation or earning money a specific way and they're no longer happy. They're no longer feeling passionate about their work and they're no longer finding it enjoyable. And more importantly, you are a sign that really, you know, you have a very strong sense of intellectual curiosity. So you want to be in an environment where you feel challenged every day and you feel like you can learn new things and you can excel and you can grow. So I feel like the, the way that you're making money, I, I feel that it might not be conducive for growth at this point. So some re-examination is needed in your finance sector. Uh, what I'm also getting as well is um, if, you know, this, this seems to me like a, a big card. So this is something, if it's not taken care of in January, it's going to revert back. Like it's going to come back throughout the year, throughout 2017 for re-examination. So take care of it early on in the year. Set the intention for the year to change this aspect, this area of your life, okay? So I'm doing this spread as a preventative measure. Whatever problem spots that show up, you want to take care of it early on. Otherwise, it will come back and it will, you know, 
um, either worsen or it will demand attention um, you know, in a later part of the year, okay? Um, as it pertains to your values, we also have the Six of Cups here in the reverse. Um, I feel like for some of you, especially for those of you who are a little bit younger, the Six of Cups is um, a, a childhood conditioning. Um, and what it means is that your value system, for example, the things that you believe in, the things that you really stand, um, stand up for, um, there is some sense of like family indoctrination, okay? So it feels almost as if you might have been raised to believe a certain thing and then you've never questioned it because everyone around your environment believed it. And so this is a, a card that comes in to, to force you to re-examine as well. What are some of the things that, uh, you know, where, where are your values and are they still appropriate in the age and in the circumstance that you are right now? So whatever you grew up with, you need to re-examine it with a fine-tooth comb and you need to go through it and to see if it's really still appropriate for you and whether or not it is something that aligns with your values, your own personal values, or whether or not it's just something that, you know, that, that you were just told to believe without much question. So a little bit of a inner work regarding, you know, what do I believe in and where do I stand on a specific topic? That is going to be coming through for a re-examination all throughout this year as well, okay? And we really want to think about, you know, children in terms of like, what types of values do I want to pass down to my kids as well? And so you want to, you know, it's not only re-examining this aspect of your life for yourself, but more so for like the, the, the people around you, the people that you love and the values that you want to pass on to them or to promote in your environment, all right? So third house deals with siblings and it also deals with um, communication. So this is another area that needs a lot of uh, focus for the rest of this year as well. Communication with the moon in the reverse position, this is basically indicative of um, some type of, uh, I wanna say like covert, almost dishonest communication. And um, it might not be dishonest in a way where, you know, somebody is telling a direct lie. It's a little bit more complicated with the moon. The moon in the reverse is like not being able to, um, to communicate effectively where you understand the other person's um, intentions. And then likewise, the other person might not understand your intentions. And uh, with the moon, it, it triggers, you know, emotions, feelings. And so what it basically says is that, you know, you want to be very, very careful that you're communicating in a rational way rather than sparking off from an emotional reaction. So be very careful about reining in your energy because I feel like the energy that you're projecting is it's very emotional. It's, it's just like, you know, that that visceral, that gut instinct that you have where you feel like this is the way that it is because it feels right rather than being able to explain it in a logical, in a rational uh, way, why something is the way that it should be. So I feel like, you know, um, being a little bit more, I guess, like systematic, organized with your thoughts, being a little bit more systematic. And I feel like, you know, the, the moon represents Pisces. So it's a card about sympathy as well. Um, in order to persuade other people to your point of view, I feel that you have to know your audience, right? And you also have to understand where they're coming from so that you can put yourself in their shoes and create an argument or, um, you know, a discourse that will, I guess, like that will speak to their experience so that they can understand where you're coming from and they can feel, you know, more in alignment with your own belief. So whatever, whenever you want to persuade somebody of something, know your audience, know who you're talking to, and um, being able to put yourself in their shoes so that you can convince them. That's going to be very important. Um, I, I am getting a message here regarding some health issues. So I feel a lot of discussions about health, uh, somebody else's health, and even a health of a sibling. So I do feel some communications and things like that coming through with a sibling regarding health issues, okay, with the moon card. Um, in terms of your sibling, uh, your home environment and your sibling, so 
you know, siblings, you, you might have step siblings, you might have, you know, um, siblings that are ad adopted, and some of you might be the only child. So let me just talk about people who actually have siblings, first of all. The moon in the reverse um, might have been a situation where, you know, somebody was vacant, like somebody was not there growing up. So you might have lived in different households and things like that, and then you come back together at an uh, older age. So even though you're siblings, you feel like this sense of distance and this emotional estrangement from one another. And then likewise, with blended family, step-siblings, and, you know, even adopted siblings, I feel that same type of energy where... You might have like even grown up together, but for some reason there was that emotional estrangement and you couldn't, you know, you, you don't have that normal sibling or that integrated sibling type of a relationship with your siblings. For others, especially those who are only child, the, the moon card can indicate a situation where you might f have felt very, very lonely, almost as if you don't have a sounding board, you don't have another person to bounce ideas off of. And I feel as well, a lot of you uh, who are, um, who might have been only child grown up, I feel like imaginary friends, you know, like having imaginary friends to take place, uh, to create that sounding board so that you have somebody to bounce ideas off of, even though they might not be real. So I do see an element here about um, feeling a little bit lonely and isolated growing up almost as if other people couldn't understand you so you might be um you might have had siblings and gr you might have grown up with them in the same household but overall there's a sense of isolation and loneliness so this is an area in your life um that it's a little bit of a sore spot for you what I'm also getting as well is you know um in terms of like mitigating this energy in terms of like um, sorting out this energy so that it doesn't affect you as we progress through the rest of this year. This is forcing you to have more constant communication with siblings and if they are not, you know, uh, in a position where they're in the picture all the time. I do feel that, you know, the other aspect here, the other house that can um, somehow break this cycle and allow you some type of an outlet is the opposite house. So the opposite house deals with the ninth house, which is philosophies, um, religion, and um, higher education. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But just to emphasize here, this is a little bit of a sore spot for you. And one of the ways that can really help you mitigate the loneliness associated with, you know, uh, communication as well as some, some type of um, estrangement when it comes to sibling is to try to cultivate the other area, which is expanding your mind, expanding your horizon, so that you are linking yourself up with like-minded people who can even serve as family members to you, or who can feel like family members because you have a common philosophical belief. So rather than dwelling on blood ties and you know who's related to whom biologically, I feel like the other, um, the other outlet that you have here is to cultivate uh, friendships and you know uh, group associations even with people who are a little bit more philosophically like uh, similar to you so that you can you know focus more on the higher chakra which is communication and um, you know thoughts and intelligence and and being able to verbalize your um, whatever you know like it be being able to like disseminate information rather than dwelling on this aspect, which is a lot more emotional, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, so the fourth house deals with your mother as well as the family environment. It's the family environment that you grew up in as well as the family environment that you are hoping to create or have created for yourself. We do have the death card in the reverse position and the death card in the reverse position is um, a home environment as well that that needs some type of change okay so there's a lot of stagnant energy as we are proceeding into you know like um at the beginning of your reading there is already a lot of things here i mean we have some new things on the relationship front but i do feel as well there's a lot of stagnancy there's stagnancy when it comes to money and income and work there's a lot of stagnancy when it comes to the housing environment as well um, I feel like the, first of all, let's talk about the house that you're in, um, the family that you're hoping to create for yourself. It just feels to me like it's incomplete. 
So there might have been some type of a upheaval that happened in the home environment recently. And it might have happened for the past three years because, you know, you went through that uh, Saturn transit that where it really shook up your world so that you can reassess some of the of the things that was not healthy or happy for you, okay, in, in your life. So some major upheavals have happened during that uh, Saturn transit three years ago. And so what I feel happening here with the death card is um, I feel that a lot of you, you want to break out, you want to relocate, but there are some binding elements like, you know, sentimental uh, ties to a specific family, to a specific home. And then for others of you, as it pr relates to the um, childhood home that you grew up in, um, the death card basically means a lot of um, instability, a lot of like just, uh, it's not a traditional type of a family uh, with the death in the reverse. It's basically like confusing ties. There might have been a lot of um, changes, like fluctuations in um, financial status of the parents, which, you know, affects like the lifestyle of the children. So, and there's also, I, I feel like shifting away to different areas, a lot of instability that came through that um, it, it just didn't feel very stable. As it relates to the mother, the death card in the reverse position is a woman that undergoes many, many uh, transformations throughout her life, okay? But with the death card in the reverse position as well, the reversals um, basically indicates a situation that needs to change, but somebody is not willing to change. So I feel like, you know, the mother might be plagued with um, making the same decisions, like, you know, dating the same types of people or even um, feeling like very stagnant in her own life, but not making the necessary changes for herself. Um, the death card reverse as well you know this is your card this is the card of scorpio as it um you know the major arcana it the first few major arcana it represents the zodiac sign so this is the uh, card of scorpio and when it shows up in the reverse position um it's basically saying something like there is a very very strong emotional tie with the mother and they're saying literally you are a lot like um, you are more like your mother than you think and I feel like you actually can learn a lot from her decisions like the the way she lives her life the the patterns repeating in her life as well as um, you know watching her life how her life plays out is going to provide a lot of um, I want to say like uh, foreshadowing for things to come. And keep in mind, these are things that we can change, so don't look at it uh, too fatalistically. So these are things that you can change. But I do feel there's an element here of, you know, having a some type of a cyclical, almost like a karmic tie with the mother, where things that are happening in her life are going to, you, you're, you're encountering similar um, energies through her life. Um, look into, you know, I, I feel like sometime for this month, there might be some health issues as it relates to your family members, okay? So just expect that. And um, I also feel as well like um, the energy is surrounding siblings and the um, the mother. So those are the two areas. The next card here is the tower, and this rules your fifth house. The fifth house is the house of recreation, fun, and the things that you do um, in order to you know, find enjoyment in life. It also rules the house of children. So first of all, um, for those of you who have children, once again, um, be very, very careful about health issues as it relates to children as well. Be very, keep a very vigilant eye on them because I do send some issues here. If they are younger, be careful about falls, fractures, and you know, um, little accidents here and there. And then if they're like, uh, you know, like around 13 to around 20 or so, be very, very careful about, um, I feel like some uh, is reckless behaviors, just reckless behaviors, like not, not being where they're supposed to be. They tell you like, oh, I'm going to this place with such and such. And you find out, you know, that they're not there. So I do feel like some um, vigilance, some monitoring of children is going to be necessary here with the tower. I actually pulled out another card. And um, 
I pulled out another card just to see because, you know, usually with the major arcana cards like the tower, um, it's important to pull out another one just so to expand on this concept here. We do have the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles basically being in a very, very crowded environment and feeling very stifled and feeling um, almost like claustrophobic. So I do feel for a lot of you, um, I feel that, you know, it's be very, very careful where you go to and especially in places that might have, you know, they, they, they say like, you know, those... Um, um, maximum occupancy, the restrictions on how many people can be in a specific venue at a specific time. So be very careful about overcrowding, going to places that are a little bit too crowded and then something happens and then everyone has to evacuate. So I do see like false alarms when it comes to fire alarms. It is the new year so we're experiencing, you know, also um, I, I feel like inclement weather or something like that, that's going to really affect your ability to really enjoy yourself for this month. Um, I also feel that there is a major transformation as well regarding the way that you entertain yourself. So a lot of you might have been thinking, you know, about entertaining more at home, inviting family over, for example, or even just, you know, enjoying uh, yourself at home. Um, hosting family or even dinners with friends and family rather than going out and and I feel that you're more focused on savings okay so overall that looks good um, the sixth house deals with your health your work and also the um, daily routine okay and we have here the three of cups so first of all the three of cups as it relates to your work there might be some type of, um, I, I want to say like, um, it, it's like, f this is a card about group acceptance when it's in the upright position. When it's in the reverse position, it's like a little bit of a uh, catty energy surrounding co-workers. Co-workers not getting along and then one person, you know, comes to you with their grievances around uh, about the other person and then the, the other person come, coming to you with grievances and, and vice versa. So I feel that you're kind of like caught in the crossfires of um, people falling out in your work environment. Um, because you're also the suit of water, I feel that you can also be embroiled in this. So be very, very careful about, you know, work um, uh, demeanor. So uh, work conduct. So don't get involved in office politics. Don't get involved in, um, I, I want to say like office romance as well, uh, office romance coming to light. So like people catching wind that you are, um, potentially involved with somebody, um, that you're not supposed to be involved with in your work environment. And also just uh, overall cattiness and, and gossip. Just be careful and to avoid that, okay? Keep, lay low. Just don't get involved when people um, want to, if, if people want to vent about a fellow coworker or a boss or whatever it is, just let them vent. Don't chime in and don't offer anything, okay? I feel like it can backfire, so be very careful. Uh, the entire three cards here are all major arcana, so I feel that um, the their energy, you know, I read them in relations to one another. So I feel that this um, area of your life, it, it needs a little bit of work, okay? So uh, the work environment, especially how you entertain yourself, make sure that you are not involved with like seedy people and you're not using, you know, um, doing like destructive things as it relates to recreation so this things that are self-destructive okay and then uh, we do have issues here regarding you know communication siblings and things like that all right so those are the the three four areas that you might want a little bit of focus on or at least iron those wrinkles out as we um, continue into January um, so as it relates to your daily activities and you know your your daily routine the Three of Cups in the reverse position as well is, um, it's a card about, you know, not really going out as much, not really like, um, uh, I, I almost want to say like, you're, you're not really, um, I, I feel like your social life somehow, you're either purposely doing this or, you know, the, the opportunities are not available, but there's a, a lack of going out, mingling and, um, talking to a lot of people. So overall, I do see a sense of like isolation, a little bit of a loneliness. 
And when you do go out, it feels a little bit forced and it feels a little bit uncomfortable for you. Okay, so you are a lot more selective about, you know, who you are hanging out with. I feel for some of you, I, I feel for some of you, there might have been some major, major inform, um, information or news or things like that coming to light with the people that you're hanging out with as well. So you are reassessing. You're re reassessing whether or not they're still good friends to keep around as well. Uh, reassessment is always good when it comes to friendships because oftentimes, you know, uh, we we usually outgrow people and we just hang on for sentimental reason. And you have a habit of doing that too, Scorpio. You hang on to people that might not be good for you, uh, mainly because you have a history with them or mainly because, you know, you grew, grew up together. But just make sure that the people you surround yourself with are appropriate for you and that they induce growth and you know they they bring about new opportunities for for mutual growth okay um let me see what else here so in terms of your health the three of cups is pretty much cutting back on drinking cutting back on sugar consumption cutting back on like you know the 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 richer foods and things like that so i i feel like you're you know you're getting the the basic diet like um getting to the root of a, the matter so you know cutting back on sugar and things that might create uh excess weight gain and things like that so i do sense you know um you are definitely a lot more stringent a lot stricter when it comes to your diet and you know your health so that looks good now the seventh house deals with uh, partnership and it could be partnerships in romance or partnership in work first of all for those of you who are uh, partnered up with another person in work okay so let's just say work first we have here the king of wands this is a fire sign this is a sagittarius an aries or a leo and this is a person that is um they can be a little bit demanding when it comes to their needs okay they can be a little bit like um i almost feel like somebody who is quite intimidating to to deal with somebody that you might be intimidated by or somebody that is quite controlling that's kind of difficult and quite demanding and controlling so um this energy as it pertains to a work partnership um i do feel that this person is looking at other avenues to make money and I feel that they're scoping out new territories without consulting you. So I do sense as well that, you know, they, they might want to leave the partnership or they might want to like check out elsewhere. So it, they're saying somebody with the wondering eyes. So I feel that this can also relate if you are dealing with this person as a relate of uh, a romantic partner. So for those of you and you know this is a it's gender neutral so this can be a male or a female if you're dealing with this person um i feel like some somehow for the majority of this month they might be in the picture at the beginning of the month and then they might be out of the picture by the end of the month so don't put all your eggs in one basket with this person if it's somebody new that you've just met which is you know fire sign sun moon or rising uh sagittarius aries or leo don't put all your eggs in one basket with this person they seem a little bit um, unreliable. It's almost as if they're they're looking at you know the um, it, greener pastures. It's almost as if they are emotionally uh, checked out and they're looking for excitement. They're looking for a lot of fun. They want to do things that um, they want to relive like um, their their youth. So they're a little bit reckless and irresponsible. At their best, they can be very very protective, very generous with their time and their resources. Um, at their worst though i feel that you know there are a lot of control issues here and you don't like to be contr controlled by other people so i feel like you both are working at cross purposes with one another okay uh what i'm also feeling is this is an ideas person this is a person with great plans great ideas but i feel that they don't really um take those ideas into the world in order to build them so they they expect other people to do it and they don't want to get their hands dirty so i feel like you're dealing with somebody like this as it relates to a work partnership or a romantic partner um your eighth house deals with uh joint finances 
So the eighth house is basically the psychic house. And um, just for the purposes of this reading, I want to simplify a little bit and see how it relates to you. But usually if there are important things that, you know, if the card is important and it falls into a specific house, then I will mention it. But the eighth house and also the twelfth house, those are both psychic houses. And so let's talk about this card. We have the sun in the reverse position. And um, as it relates to your joint finances. The sun in the reverse is basically um, expecting like a big financial windfall or some type of a big financial payout. And then um, when you actually get the news, it's a lot less than you're hoping for. Okay. So it's a little bit of a downer and I apologize for that. But when it comes to joint finances, be very, very careful, especially if you are partner up with this person right here. I feel like they are prone to exaggeration when, you know, the, 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 the reality sinks in there might not be as much financial abundance as you had hoped okay and with the sun in the reverse as well i keep seeing um this is a card it, it represents children as well and it links up it's opposite your second house which deals with children i feel like a lot of expenditure is going towards the children so you know you and a partner um if you are if you have joint like um either joint custody or even like uh, joint finances linked up together. There seems like, you know, at first it seems like there's a lot of money, but then after you subtract all the expenditures as it relates to children, then I feel that there isn't a lot left over. So be very careful when it comes to spending overall, okay? Um, for those of you who are just, you know, single and you have um, share, like you, you, you live with another person and you share things with another person, either a roommate even like family members or even whoever it is that you are dealing with it feels almost as if one person is not putting in their fair share of the responsibility so um, the the responsibilities being their financial obligations so somebody is falling short mainly because they're not um, practical when it comes to calculating and doing their budget okay sitting down doing their budget uh, this situation they're saying is going to clear up like within a month or so, but this is a seems to me as if this is a sore spot in your chart right now, and if you let it fester, um, it can become a major problem for 2017. So just something to work out right now when while you can, okay? Balance out whatever that financial obligation you share with another person. Balance it out, sort it out. I do feel it's heavily related to children and things like that. So the ninth house deals with um, higher education. It deals with foreigners. It deals with foreign travel as well as philosophy, religion, and things like that. Um, we have here the King of Swords. And I feel like for those of you who are in school, for those of you who are in school, this is a very, very good card. This is somebody um, that is very logical. They're very, very systematic. Their mind is very sharp. They have incredible critical thinking and problem solving skills. And so if you're in school, I feel like this is the energy that you are projecting. You're very methodical. And I do feel like a lot of you might be in the technical profession if you are um, in school. I do see a lot of people doing research, crunching numbers, or even doing statistical analysis. So I do see a lot of uh, techies, you know, and especially math people. Um, in terms of like, you know, uh, as it relates to like um, philosophies, foreigners and even foreign travel, there is this person in your life right now that is really expanding your horizon. So we have here a uh, Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra, sun, moon or rising, and it can be male or female. Um, the way that it shows up here is this is somebody who is... Um, they're not an emotional person. You know, they, they, they have a lot of questions. They're very inquisitive. They know a lot of things about a lot of things. And I feel that uh, their energy is not one that is very laid back and receptive. Their energy is a little bit more confrontational. So they like verbal debates. They like, you know, having philosophical discussions. And I feel that you're going to be communicating with this person heavily and uh, I feel like they might challenge as well. They might challenge some of the things that you have uh, grown up believing. They might challenge, they might, you know, force you to back up your claims. They might force you to like show them evidence and things like that. 
if you're a student, you might have a teacher like this, okay? Like a professor or even a teacher. And so this is somebody, in order to get on his, on his or her um, good terms, you want to like quote everything, cite everything so that he knows that you're, you're thorough, okay? Um, let me see, foreign travel. There is discussion about travel with this person. So however they appear in your life, there's a lot of discussions about travel with this Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising, and male or female. And it, it's very good for you. And I feel like it's going to be um, kind of like a, an outlet. So I feel that, you know, if you want it, if you, um, while grown up, you might have wanted a lot of emotional, you know, conversations. I feel that as an adult, the outlet, in order for you to get this emotional gratif uh, gratification is to have these very, very philosophical dis discussions with another person. I do feel like that's going to really feed uh, your emotional needs as an adult. Okay, so if this, if the emotional aspect has been vacant grown up, I feel like you're compensating in this manner. And it's not negative or positive, but I feel like it's going to be quite uh, different from what you're used to. And it actually can heal this aspect right here. Okay, so focus more on having these philosophical discussions. Focus more as well. This is a very good card that basically means, you know, you, um, for those of you, who want to go back to school, this is a good card that it's a basically a yes because your mind is very sharp and if it's not utilized, then it's basically wasted. So they're, they're in really encouraging, to, encouraging you to go back to school or even if you're kind of like at a loss for a career path and or even a work, um, you know, finding a work environment that's favorable for you that will make you happy. I do feel like going back to school or working in an educational institution would be very beneficial for you, okay? Uh, the tenth house deals with career, and it also deals with the father. So let me talk about the father first, because this is a big message coming through. So the four of swords is a card about recuperation, you know, like uh, after surgery, after some type of... Um, health crisis okay so this is like overcoming that coming out of surgery and getting the clean bill of health so i feel that you know you're, you might hear something about this as it relates to your father as it relates to um your career we have the four of swords and the four of swords is a situation where we have um stay rested for too long and we need to make a move we need to like resume the battle and we need to just um uh, put ourselves out there to see what's available so I feel like um, there might be some disagreements and some strife coming through in your work environment right now. I feel like you're maxing out on your ability to really, you know, um, progress on the income level. So I feel that it's really important for you to figure out um, where you need to be career wise, because this area is also quite shaky. And I feel like for a lot of you, you might have um, been raised in an environment where things were kind of unstable, where you, you, you couldn't get like, you know, that clear sense of guidance from either a father figure or a mother figure. And as a result of it, and you might not have had like, you know, siblings that you can bounce ideas off of. You might have been the only child or there wasn't that strong connection between siblings. So I feel that you were like on your own trying to figure things out and it, it became very, very difficult. So I feel like you're kind of like, floating around uh you know what you like but i feel that you just need to like you know take the steps in order to get there okay take the steps to steer your career path in the right direction this is coming up for re-examination too now going back to what i mentioned about three years ago we were going through a, a major major saturn return it was quite painful but uh whatever was problematic had to be pretty much knocked down so that you can rebuild, rebuild, right? So your foundation, it was built on faulty footing. And so it crumbled and it needed to be dismantled because it wasn't good for you. So what it's saying is that, you know, sometimes some people, so let's just say, you know, if a tower breaks down, right? Some people, they get a little bit uh, complacent. They're afraid of change. So whatever is broken down, they try to um, use the same material to build it back up. And then others, you know, they, they wipe the slate clean and they start over. 
And so they're pretty much urging you right now, you know, you, you have obligations, you have things where, and I feel like a lot of you have children and you have like financial obligations. So you can't really start over, even though you want to, it's always easier to just wipe the, uh, the slate clean and just, you know, rebuild from scratch. It's a lot easier, but you have family obligations. You can't do that. And then others of you, there's nothing holding you back, but I feel like it's the fear of change because you're showing up here in the reverse position, meaning that you're clinging on to a situation way past its expiration date and some things need to change in your life, but you're so fearful of change, okay? So depending on which uh, side of the coin you fall under, some things need to change and we have a lot of things, a lot of areas actually that need a lot of work. So tackle one thing at a time. Otherwise, all of these things will kind of uh, coalesce and affect you throughout 2017. So just a heads up, okay, Scorpio? Um, okay, so 11th house. 11th house deals with your friends and your group associations. Um, first of all, we have here a situation with the two of pentacles. This is like juggling financial obligations. I feel like for some time this month, there might be a friend that might need your help, uh, financial assistance, okay? And I feel like um, there there might be a friend here that you are either lending money to or you are reaching out to, um, I, I don't, I feel like you might be the one reaching out to, um, for financial assistance or, or a friend is coming in to reach out to reach out to you for financial assistance. But either way, um, there is going to be news and things like that related to a friend. This is also a card about travel as well. So, you know, traveling to see a friend or even having a friend come to see you. So the, it looks very, very positive overall. As it relates to group associations, um, this is a card about you still reassessing. So I mentioned before, you know, uh, oftentimes group associations relate to uh, things that are optional, right? So you want to ally yourself with groups and even um, uh, groups that have potential for professional networking. But the way that things are right now, I feel like with your value system, uh, they need to be re-examined. So I feel like, you know, you're still going through a major rebuilding process. You're trying to find your footing. And so right now, you're still not sure. You're still uncertain. And I, I actually don't see Scorpios feeling uncertain. This is the first time that I feel that, you know, on the one hand, you have a lot of um, abundance, like in love and, and support. But on the other hand, it, it feels almost as if you're coming into this year very wobbly when it comes to your foundation overall. And when you're wobbly with your foundation, you're not really sure, like, what you can believe in, what you know to be true, and you're not really sure about your capabilities and what you really stand for and what you can really believe in anymore. So you're, there's a, almost like a spiritual crisis or a, a crisis of faith. And so sort this out as well, okay? And the group associations then basically indicates that uh, you're not going to be able to, to network with people and join these associations until you figure out where you stand, until you figure out what you really value. Once that is figured out, then this can happen for you, okay? The 12th house basically deals with institutions and it deals with secrets, okay? So just for the sake of this reading, um, first of all, the 12th house is another very, very psychic house and it's um, heavily activated. So we have the eighth house, which is heavily activated, but is it activated in a way where you are getting some push, some nudge to take care of your career and your public image, okay? Reform your career path and your public image. And the 12th house here is, uh, signifies, you know, um, some type of a soulmate connection here coming through for you. So the two of cups is, we have as well the six of cups, which is a soulmate connection. So both of these things indicate to me that there is a soulmate person in your environment. They can um, offer you a lot of like spiritual healing. Uh, whatever past relationship where you thought that, you know, that person was a soulmate, I feel that there is a new one coming through and it's going to provide some healing, 
some healing, um, whatever destruction was brought about by the previous situation, circumstance, is going to provide some healing. Additionally, what they're saying is, because this is a house of secrets, this is not something that you are aware of. But I feel that, um, I, I feel this overwhelming sense of loneliness. It's almost like, you know, being surrounded by a bunch of people, but still feeling on the outs, feeling as if, I'm not being understood. So I feel that it's really important for you in order to like um, let that go away. You are going to have to network a little bit more with people. You are going to have to have like more soulful connections and um, conversations with other people. So that means letting your guard down. That basically means as well um, seeing another person rather than focusing on you know how different you are. Um, looking at them like and and you know try to pinpoint your similarities so treating others in a more egalitarian way that's going to be very beneficial for you to allow you to see things from their perspective okay so having more soulful communication as well as philosophical discussions these are the two main things you should focus on because they're heavily they're very strong in this spread so that's those two areas are going to provide very good outlets for you to overcome uh, these challenges that happened in the past three years to overcome the sense of isolation and feeling like as if you your friends don't really understand you so you need to to get this um, rolling for the next few months so that it doesn't you know affect you throughout the entire year okay I'm going to go into your love reading now. So um, I pulled out this guy because he is the card that represents your seventh house, which is the house of um, relationship. So we're going to use this as a segue into the next uh, portion of the reading. So let me shuffle the cards. So what's in store for you for love, romance, and relationship for the month of January 2017? I feel like some of you, um, if you have like children with, with another person, there is like constant communication back and forth. So I feel like there, there might be some conflicts coming through in a relationship. If you have a relationship, um, if you have like children with a relationship partner, okay? So disagreements over responsibilities as well as... Um, so they're saying disagreements over responsibilities as it relates to children, uh, parenting, co-parenting techniques, disagreements regarding, you know, who's supposed to pick up the kids, who's, who has the kids on which day. So I feel that coming through. Um, so it, it, it's, it's not like major arguments, but it can be resolved. And I feel like, you know, that's for those of you who have children and are still with the, the mother or the father of the children. And then others of you, I feel like there is, um, you know, like custody issues and even like wanting to renegotiate the terms of custody, who has the kids for what day. And then some are still on the tail end of major divorces. OK, so this is a card about, you know, wanting to like break out, wanting to start something new, but feeling very, very restricted. So as it relates to this reading, I feel that a lot of you are like, you just want some excitement. You want to break out of the minutia of, you know, like the everyday living, having to take care of yourself, having to handle responsibility, work and things like that. So I feel like you want, a, you want something to stir you up. You want something to like make you feel alive and make you feel that passion and, you know, excitement again. Um, and there are circumstances in your environment that might not allow you to do that either 
um, practical obligations that you have to other people or just you know your environment is not too conducive for that so let me just talk about the foundation and the foundation is um, something that you has already happened you know to be true and it's uh, it's something that you already know coming into January of um, 2017 okay we have here the two of coins and the two of coins is usually um, the juggler this is a situation when we are like either juggling responsibilities juggling two people or trying to get our footing as it relates to a, a relationship partner okay a lot of you are involved with this person this is an air sign an Aquarius a Gemini or a Libra and this is a person that is um, he shows up he or she shows up in the reverse position so this is somebody that um, they, they might have a habit of not communicating in a way that expresses what they mean so what it, it what it indicates to me here is that you have to do a little bit of a guessing game constantly to understand if they are serious or if they're joking so there is some some uh, communication issues as it relates to this air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra and um, I also want to say here as well if you are dealing with this person it seems to me almost as if they're giving you some information and your in your intuition kicks in because you know you are highly psychic your intuition kicks in your and you're just like that doesn't sound like the truth and they're giving you the information and because they're showing up in the reverse position you want to be very very careful about what they're telling you okay and I also feel as well overall this indicates a lot of excitement a lot of flirtation but it's a situation that is not entirely stable I mean he's standing on a lizard and at any point you know he can slip and fall so it's a situation that might have been very exciting but there's still communication problems and then on top of that it's a relationship that is very 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 unstable and then for others of you you might be um, money finances might be affecting your relationship as well so you know going back to people who are parents um, there are a lot of expenditures so I feel almost as if you know money finances and things like that really affecting your ability to date your ability to get out out there your ability to really maintain relationships as well okay um, going back to the past let's look at the past situation in the past we have the hangman and this is being stuck in a situation that was not entirely favorable or even comfortable uh, the hangman is a card about sacrifice it's a card about you know sacrificing something that we um, we we know is not good for us mainly because we want to be a better person so whatever that means to you I feel that it re relates to a person from the past with the eight of wands here cutting off communication f with a person from the past even though they keep soliciting you you have to do it because it wasn't a good environment for you to be in even though you might have really liked them even though you know there might have been a lot of chemistry a lot of passion but for whatever reason you feel that in the greater scheme of things it wasn't going to work out or it wasn't going to be a good uh, relationship for you so you had to make that sacrifice in order to better yourself so stopping communication with a person from the past mainly because it's almost like stopping communication with them cutting them out of your life because it wasn't serving your higher purpose okay which brings us to the present in situation the present situation here we have the four of cups this is you breaking out of your rut you're starting to date and you're starting to you know give other people like a, a chance to either get to know you on an emotional level or even giving other people a chance in order to like um, make connections with other people so in the past you might have been uh, very very selective about who you date you are a fixed water sign so you don't give your heart away easily you you make people jump through hoops and I do sense that you know um, for this month coming through you have implemented some type of a stoppage in communication and so you are declare like either a bachelor or a bachelorette and you're actually going out on dates and you're giving people the opportunity 
to um, come into your life, okay? It's linked up as well with the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords is a conflict card. When it shows up in the reverse, it basically means an end to conflict, a coming together, and even like, you know, hashing out your differences. But uh, the, the harmony, the peace treaty that is coming through at the end of it. So for those of you with disputes, um, you know, regarding children, who's doing what and, you know, who's um, shouldering the weight of the responsibilities as it pertains to children, I feel like you're not going to be in disputes with your partners anymore. So it looks good. Crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about. We have here the Six of Swords and the Six of Swords is um, basically cautioning you. Whatever conflict that comes up during this month, um, we're still dealing with the Mercury in retrograde and usually things that have been swept under the rug for many, many months um, often comes up. OK, so the same topic are being argued over and the same subjects where you're not seeing eye to eye with a partner. Those things are going to be coming up for you to reexamine them, address them and lay them to rest for good. And so I feel like there is a recurring problem um, either responsibilities or even like you know whether or not you can trust like trust issues you know the same things over and over again it keeps coming up and it, it's like the same debate every single time and with the six of swords you're not able to sail away from these troublesome issues it keeps recurring and it keeps coming back in so if it keeps coming back in you need to find a way to reach a truth and just to never mention it again or at least resolve it so that it doesn't creep up because on a karmic level, it is coming up so that you can resolve it. Because I feel almost as if, if you don't resolve this, it can make or break the relationship down the line. So if you're dealing with another person and they're complaining about, you know, you not being emotionally expressive and things like that, you need to address that issue, okay? And I feel, once again, it is linked up with um, responsibilities, like practical responsibilities, um, financial issues, as well as who's putting in their fair share of the work to maintain the relationship. So I feel for some of you in relationships, finances might be seriously affecting your the, the, the prospect of that relationship. And I keep seeing, you know, parents and children. So I feel child rearing. Somebody's not putting in their fair share or the other person at least feels as if their partner is not putting their in their fair share. So this is coming through again. So um, just, you know, try to fix it. Okay. What we have that's coming through for you who are singles. We have here the magician and the magician. This is a really flashy person. So we have this person showing up for you as a romantic prospect, especially for those of you who are single. This is part of the person that's going to really, you know, sweep you off your, your feet and then they're going to break your heart because this is what I call the bachelor and they don't want to be in a relationship. This is th somebody who's going around and making the rounds and, you know, they're flirting and they're meeting new people and they're looking for fun and excitement and they're they're quite extravagant, very, very, very intelligent, very intelligent person. Um, traditionally, I don't think this of this person as somebody who's very good looking, but they have a lot of charisma. Um, so they, they might not be, you know, traditionally or classically handsome or beautiful, but they have a lot of charisma. They are incredibly intelligent, uh, very sociable and very likable, very charming. And so I feel like, you know, their stage presence is really going to sweep you, sweep you off your feet. But it leads me to believe that this is a person that you is not going to be a good relationship partner because they're going to tell you they're not looking for a relationship up front. They're just going to tell you, I don't feel that they're being um, dishonest. Otherwise, they would show up as the manipulator. So with the magician energy, it's somebody you can have fun with, but it's not somebody that you can, you know, plan a future around. OK, it's linked up here with the Queen of Cups in the reverse position. So for some of you, this could be the person that you're dealing with here, another water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And um, what I'm sensing here is that one person wants a relationship and the other person just wants fun and excitement. And what I'm also feeling as well with the Queen of Cups, this could be your energy where you are just like, 
your lifestyle is too extravagant. I keep seeing arguments over money. So one person is spending money very, very frivolously and very extravagantly. And then the other person is just like, no, I can't handle that lifestyle. You know, like it's draining me financially and even emotionally, like you can't handle that lifestyle. And so these financial arguments are coming through. Uh, fix them early on okay and especially for those of you who are single I feel like you are going to encounter this person and I feel almost like um, like once again it's a person for fun and excitement it's not a person for a relationship keep that in mind I feel like some of you are feeling a little bit inadequate in their presence for whatever reason you feel a little bit like intimidated you feel almost as if they seem very, very sharp, very witty, very intelligent, and just really charming. And so you're in danger of being swept off your feet. And I feel that uh, their lifestyle that they have, you just feel almost as if, you know, you, in comparison, you feel almost like you can't really be with them because you can't provide that lifestyle for them. So that's what I'm sensing here. 